Welcome to Rain Computers UK here in the Silicon Valley, which is North Norfolk. Uh, well, Windows 8 is here. Been here a couple of weeks. Dust is just starting to settle, and it's been boggling the minds of people the world over. But is it any good for music production? Is it any good for for audio, for video, uh, for professional creative bits and pieces? Well, we've spent the last couple of weeks testing it out, comparing it to Windows 7. And here's what we find. Now, do note that all our testing has been done on brand spanking new awesome Rain computer systems uh, with fresh installs of Windows 8. So if you're upgrading or if you're installing it on some duff old laptop, then your experience may vary. Um, so, Windows 8, is it the future? Or is it a load of old rubbish? Or more importantly, is Angry Birds any good with a mouse? Let's go and see. Opinion on the internet about Windows 8 couldn't be any broader. Everything from wow to it's a catastrophic disaster. And if you've been around a while like I have, then you'll know that this happens every time there's a major change to your operating environment. And on the surface, there's been some pretty big changes. The obvious one is the Metro styled start screen where you are faced with a fluid wall of living tiles that move and beep and tell you all sorts of interesting things about the weather and who was the last person to poke you. Doesn't mean it's a bad thing, it's just different and that's something we'll take a look at. First let me introduce the test systems and explain a bit about what we've done. First a top of the range Livebook Pro, i7 quad core processing and all that jazz, then we tried out our best selling Nimbus Z desktop an Ivy Bridge based overclocked powerhouse. And finally, there's the Lifebook SE, which is a special edition of our Lifebook. It's smaller, thinner, cooler, and the test model is running an entry level dual core i3 processor. All of them are installed with 8 gigs of RAM and an SSD system drive that comes as standard on all our systems. It's very important to note that the tests are run on brand new, up-to-date, freshly installed systems, so we can't comment on what results you might get if you're upgrading an existing system or if you built it yourself. We use three tests which attempt to provide some useful, measurable data that's consistent and has some relevance to music production. They're all based in Cubase using its inbuilt effects and VST instruments. The first test involves a sample-based instrument called Halion Sonic. Multiple instances are loaded and sustained notes are run through each one until the system crackles. A measurement is taken of how many instances and the total polyphony being played without glitching. Second test is very similar but uses the virtual synth Spectre which is more CPU intensive. The third test is the celebrated Doorbench Cubendo test from Doorbench.com. It essentially loads up a CPU intensive multiband compressor as an insert on each of 40 tracks of audio. You keep adding them and adding them until it crackles and then you back up to get to a place where the playback is stable and measure the total number at that point. It doesn't sound very complicated, which it isn't, but it can be terribly time consuming. Of course, you can mirror this across different bits of software and use different plugins and different methods, but ultimately, we're just trying to find something that measures system performance in a relevant way, and that can be compared from OS to OS on the same machine. So this will do. For consistency, we've used the same audio interface throughout, the increasingly impressive Steinberg UR28M. But before we get stuck into the numbers, let's try and dispel a couple of the persistent myths. The first one is that the Metro Start menu makes it harder to get to the software I want to use. I want to boot into the desktop, they say. Here's a comparison of going from the power button to Cubase. Second, that without the start menu, how am I supposed to find anything? Two clicks brings up everything that's installed on your computer without having to hover through menus and folders. Here's a side-by-side -side opening of the Cubase manual. You see, there's nothing to fear here. Okay, with that out of the way, let's do some side-by-side -side Windows 7 and Windows 8 comparisons. Are we ready? Door bench Windows 7. Windows 8, door bench 96K. Up to 118 without glitching. 124. 
stable playback. Sixty-four instances of Hallion. That's at one thirty-five. at 147. Livebook SE, Windows 7, Spectre Test. 44 instances. Before we get too excited, let's make sure we interpret these results properly. Microsoft had made claims about the reduction in background processes, and so the potential for improved performance was already known. So it's of no real great surprise that Windows 8 wins out in these tests. However, it's only by the narrowest of margins. The difference here is tiny and could so easily go the other way. It's also interesting to see that Windows 7 won two of the tests on the Nimbus system. This was the only system where we created a full Microsoft ID login and had all that start page paraphernalia going on, email, pictures, status updates, all that stuff. So it's fair to say that some performance is lost if you use your system for more than just music. But again, only by a tiny amount. The best news is that it works, and it works really well, and so performance is not a reason to shy away from Windows 8. For full details of the test results, please visit the website. You might have a thousand reasons to stay with Windows 7, and, and that's fine, that's all good, I can understand that. But for me, I really like the start menu, the start page. Uh, it's really good. I love the way everything's laid out, everything's accessible. I love the ways to it. I like the new uh, desktop, the, new, uh, the, the, layout, like the style of it, the flatness of it. I think it's very fresh. It feels very usable, very workable. Um, uh, uh, I like the separation between desktop and start menu. I like the fact that there's kind of two different worlds going on. The way everything is laid out, I like how I can have access to absolutely everything, how I can very easily see what's installed get to where I need to go, use the programs that I want to use. Um, so that is, is very, very positive uh, as far as I'm concerned. But it's not all, it's not all good. Um, when you, you know, once you've installed it and you've, you've messed around a little bit and plugged everything in, um, and actually if you want to sit down and do some work, the first thing you notice is where the heck are my files? I mean, there's, uh, there's pictures, there's music, there's video, there's all those sorts of things. But where are my documents? Where are my project files, my samples? Um, you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, well, for that, you have to sort of dig down into the desktop and then open up the libraries. Um, so it's not as if it's not there. It's just that, uh, you know, this side of things seems to have been sort of defocused by Microsoft. Um, so that files have suddenly become less important. Um, I mean, one of the things that's, that's missing along with the, the start menu is any kind of recent items or recent programs list. And I think that's, that's a, a kind of a strange 
a mission really. I mean, how difficult could it be to have a uh, to have a live tile which shows a list of recent documents? Um, or if uh, the you know, the last programs that I've used, why can't they? bring themselves to the top of the list over here and make themselves available so that when I do start the computer I can get straight on with continuing the, the task I was doing last. Because um, with, I mean, with tablets, with phones, with, uh, with other devices like that, they're all about doing something. They're all about you know, doing emails, doing Facebook, playing a game, uh, reading websites, consuming, that kind of thing. But what is special about a PC um, what you know, sets it apart from all these other sort of devices is that it's uh, a machine for making things. Uh, it creates the content, uh, it builds the games that we play, um, it creates the websites that people are reading. Uh, that's that's really all that stuff's still there, it's just very much defocused by uh, Microsoft, which is a shame. It's it's like, like, you know, so there's, there's things, I mean, none of these things are insurmountable, none of these things uh, are, make it impossible to use. Yeah, we can rightly feel a little bit ignored. I mean, things, I don't, I don't like the Internet Explorer, I don't like this large screen uh, thing, I like to be able to see where I am, I like to be able to see the, the URL and tabs and lots of things open at once. <laughs> Um, so I, I think the start menu could be immensely powerful. I think there's a lot of good stuff here, but at the moment there doesn't. You don't seem to be given the power to really edit it. I mean, I can move stuff about. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. I can add and remove, but I can't like right click and go create new live tile. But you know, these things may come in time. I mean, one thing I did discover, or rather, my my two-year-old discovered when messing around with the mouse, was if you go to the bottom left corner and right click you get this little menu that comes up which has lots of admin tasks in it that uh, would previously be difficult to find things like power options, your system information, device manager, disk management, task manager, control panel command prompt, you know all these sorts of things that's a great little menu and is at least a little nod from Microsoft towards a more professional user but on the whole I really like it, performance is great um, the start menu is great for what it is and could be a whole lot better. Um, uh, everything seems to work and as we unearth more uh, and the better ways to tweak it, it can only get better, you know. So yeah, and, and Angry Birds with a mouse. Uh, yeah. Pretty good, I think. So Windows 8, there you have it. Uh, it's, it's good, it's pretty good, it works. Uh, performance on a power Windows 7, um, sometimes better, sometimes not so. Uh, all the new Metro stuff is, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take some getting used to it. It's, it's not a disaster by any stretch and uh, there's bits in it that I really like and bits that get up my nose. But it's, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft haven't really given us stuff about me for, for years so I'm not going to get upset about it if there's bits that uh, I need to tweak in order to get it to work in a professional situation but um, uh, yeah it, it's, it's looking good I've got no real complaints I don't think so uh, so we'll be offering it as a choice we'll be keeping Windows 7 going as well um, you know whatever you like jump in why not looks good cheers